today's show is about education. You know, we've talked a little bit now about the families. Tell us about the health care providers. How does education help in that community? Sure. Well, you know, we all think that we should trust our doctors, right? Yeah. You know, they go to med school. Yeah. Um, certainly they're smarter than we are in most regards. And, and yet the truth is that a lot of physicians don't know all the various guidelines. They don't know you know, everything about your own particular health and situation. And so we really encourage families to come into those physician visits as an active participant, not expecting the healthcare provider to, to have all the answers and to, to be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together without your help as your own best advocate. So the patient has to play a very important role in guiding that visit to get the most out of it. But on the healthcare professional side, you know, a lot of these doctors, they've been out of their training program for 10, 20, 30 years, and the science has changed. Um, the treatments have changed. And so we at the network partner alongside professional medical societies like the American Academy of Pediatrics or the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology to provide education for those healthcare professionals. And we do this through webinars, uh, through podcasts. A lot of times we'll also do live events and focus groups where we present different patient cases and help those healthcare professionals think through, critically think through that patient type and what's the best way to treat them. Because the asthma guidelines alone are about 400 plus yeah. pages. Yeah. The food allergy guidelines are, are over 50 pages. And so it's really challenging for a general pediatrician to know all of that inside and out. And uh, we find that if we can just engage them in those case-based discussions, that a lot of times those behaviors and thoughts will develop more readily um, through the interaction with their peers and with the experts. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we're really talking about is, first of all, we're in an ever-changing world. There are new things that are happening every day in this arena. And there's a reason for it. We're having more and more people show up either with allergies or asthma or both. Is it uncommon to see both allergies and asthma together in a patient? No, actually it's very common. So in children, about 70 to 80 percent of children who have asthma also have allergies. Mm. It's very, very common. In adults, it's about 50 to 60 percent of adults with asthma who also have allergic triggers. So those two, those two uh, diseases often go hand in hand and it's really very, very commonplace if you have one to also have the other. Right. And and people, right, they think uh, this is the way asthma shows up and this is the what you look for. And I remember reading on your website, you break it down into into a couple different pieces. You know, one you call quiet asthma and the other you call noisy asthma. And I was really interested in this because the noisy asthma is the one that gets all the press. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. almost to say that the quiet asthma, the inflammation level, isn't as important as important. You know, t tell us the, f the facts about that. Yeah, and, you know, that that's an often um, a very common misconception mm -hmm. because the truth is that even when you're not having symptoms where you're not having, you know, where you have shortness of breath or coughing or wheezing, you always have that quiet asthma, the inflammation that's going on in your airways. A lot of people think you can outgrow asthma. Yeah. In fact, the science says that you absolutely cannot. That um, it, that quiet asthma is always, if you have asthma, that quiet asthma, that inflammation of the airways is always sort of like burning embers of a fire, waiting for something to stoke it and to um, cause it to become a full-blown five-bell uh, five alarm yeah. uh, fire. So, you know, that's the, the noisy part of asthma is when you're having symptoms, when you're experiencing shortness of breath and coughing and interruption to your daily life, like sleeping or working or going to school, that a lot of people think, oh, I'm, that's when I'm having asthma. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you're actually having asthma all the time in between those episodes or flares. 